are a showcase for God's amazing power. Greatness starts today. Gwen Smith loves connecting with women around the world. Co-founder of Girlfriends in God, Gwen is a talented speaker, author, songwriter, and worship leader. Gwen's desire is to teach ladies to not merely accept the huge gap between the reality of everyday life and the enormous promises of God, but rather to hope, believe, and seize the very best life God wants for His children. I'm so excited for you to meet Gwen Smith. Welcome back. It's hey, good to have you here. Happy to be here. I Want It All is the book we've been talking about. This is the, your latest book. It is. How many have you written so far? Four. This is your fourth? Yes. Wow. <laughs> two fully by myself, and then I wrote two with my ministry partners uh, with Girlfriends in God. Yeah. Yeah. So we've talked a little bit about this already. But what in, are you trying to say when you're saying, I want it all? <laughs> okay. So what I'm saying is, um, well, if for those of us who know um, what the word says and what Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, well, before John 10, 10, he said, all right, so you got an enemy and he has a plan for you. <laughs> but Jesus said in John 10, 10, that I came that you might have life and life to the full. So I look at my life and see, oh, sometimes it doesn't feel very full. It feels pretty empty and broken. And so I wanted to kind of navigate the, the gap between my life, my struggles, and, and the abundant full life that Jesus has um, for every believer. And it's different. It's different what Jesus says that full life is than what the world says. Yes. And so it's this, that's what that is. It's a journey. This whole thing has been a journey for me um, just to connect the power of God to my life. Wow. Let's go, let's go right into the book because you divide the book into three parts. Tell me about that. Okay, so there are three distinct uh, levels to, to um, the book, and it, it starts off with I want all the faith because that has to be foundational. There has to be an understanding of God's love, of his grace, of big picture. Let's, let's dream bigger. Let's think bigger um, because God is a, a God of abundance and fullness. That does not, it's not fluff. It's, there's also the trials and the struggles, and we talk about that in that faith section because we have to learn mm -hmm. to connect our struggles to the strength of God, uh, yeah. and they're very real. Um, and so there's that faith section, and the middle section is the power section. Um, I, I liken it to a connect the dots. Do you remember the, the coloring sheet we yep. used to do as kids, right? <laughs> yeah. So we'd get all the numbers and, and start to fill it in. And as you connect them, you start to see a bigger picture. And, and that's what used to get my little kid heart giddy. Well, that's the power that God has through, uh, through the Holy Spirit, through his word, is to connect us um, so that we can see the bigger picture of his will for our lives. So there's really practical yeah. meat there. Um, and then the final section is I want all of the impact. So this is about mobilizing the message of Christ in our lives. Um, and that starts with value, understanding who, that we are made as an imprint of Christ in the image of God, that we actually do have value. And that it's undeniable. Jesus talked about it himself. I mean, to a crowd of, the Bible says, thousands of people. Yeah. It was not just to his besties. It was not to his little, you know, his, his tight crew. It was to everybody. It was mm -hmm. to a broken crowd of people. And, and he was saying, listen, if, if a little sparrow, the ones that are, are, you can buy for half a penny in the market, not one of them falls to the ground without my God knowing about it. Right. And if he cares about them, he, he knows you. Mm -hmm. He knows you. He knows your flaws. He knows your failures. And he still loves you. He sees <laughs> you. You are valuable. And this came from the mouth of the one who, who took on death for us. So this is a big message. And we need to get that because then when we understand that we do have this intrinsic value uh, in humanity, but then uh, a special value in Christ to, to take his message to the world, um, we just start to play that out and hash it out. So that, that, that's good. the sections, all the faith, yeah. all the power, all the impact. Let's talk about faith for a minute, because what, you know, the Christians were first called believers, yes. weren't they? And what you believe about yourself is really where your life's going to go. I mean, if you just think you're stupid, there's consequences to that. Right. If you believe that. You're absolutely right. If you believe that I don't fit in anywhere, God could not use me because of my messy life. Yes. Uh, anything you believe has consequences. So this first section on faith is a huge issue. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. 
And here's the deal. If we believe that, then we're not believing the truth of the word. Exactly. Because Jesus, when he gave the Great Commission, that we, we call it the Great Commission, when he said, um, you are going to go out on my behalf and you are going to bear witness to who I am, to, to your Jerusalem, your Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. He was not talking to a crowd of perfect people. No. He was talking to average, ordinary people, just like you, just like me. Yeah. And so it wasn't about our perfection, it was about His. Mm -hmm. So our value and, and what we believe does matter. We need to li listen to Him, we need to listen, listen. I do have a plan for you. And it's actually not about you, it's about me. You know, so really it's all that in Christ stuff. It is all about, um, it is about believing. It's about sure. just trusting that what he says is actually real. It's like we've got the things that we believe, and then you go to the Word of God, and this is the mind of God. This is what God yes. believes. So <clears throat> I had a situation. I have four daughters, <laughs> and uh, I was when bedtime, we were talking about that. It was so mm -hmm. special time. So Sal and I would go up with them, but one of them was crying, and she was in grade one. And uh, so I remember going in there and sitting by her bed, and a little guy in kindergarten had told her she was ugly. So, <laughs> so we, here's a conversation and how it went. I said, well, what does your dad say? Well, daddy, you say I'm beautiful. And what does a little boy say? Well, the little boy said I was ugly. I said, well, now, who are you going to believe? Mm. And she was crying, and she's rubbing her chubby little hands in her eyes, and she thinks for a minute, and she goes, I believe you. <laughs> I said, right, I'm beautiful, and I'm smart, too. And... <laughs> to me, that is a really good little, because uh, it's a true story, but everyone has to make a decision. Who are you going to believe? You're going to believe Father God or someone else? Exactly. I, I, that reminds me of a time when I had um, just dropped my kids off back when they were young, and I was dropping them off at school before they drove. Uh -huh. What is that? Um, so I had dropped them off, and I, then I went to um, the gas station, <laughs> and I pulled in, and I went in to prepay. And um, so I paid what I would expect a full tank to be. And then on the way out, I saw a woman that I knew um, who um, was a secretary at a local church. And so we were gabbing, going, da, 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 you know, whatever. And then I went on my day, I went to a coffee shop and just started to spend time with the Lord and had this really great time because I love coffee and I love Jesus and you put them together, yes. So I'm having this good time with the Lord. And all of a sudden, I realized that I never pumped my gas. Seriously, I know. I know. So I'm like, oh my word. So I immediately gathered up my stuff, like flew to my car, and I am racing across town. And I swear, I pulled in on two wheels. No, I'm just kidding. I, 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 but it was like screech, blah, the whole time. The whole time I'm dialoguing in my head, there's this like, this internal dialogue going, you are so dumb. How could you? I mean, this is such a little thing. If you can't get this right, how in the world are you going to be responsible for big things? Because, because you know, and, and I was beating myself up. Yep. And then just giving this negative self-talk. And then as I'm, as I'm getting close, I'm going, Lord, let her remember me. Just let her remember me. Please help her. Let her remember me that I paid, that I paid. And so I run in. And I didn't even, I didn't even stop. I, I run in and I said to the girl, do you remember me? And she, she picked up a receipt and she turned and smiled. And she goes, I know exactly who you are. Go ahead and fill up. No. You're, you're paid in full. <laughs> and I was like, just like peace washed over me. I'm like, yes, thank you, Lord. And as I'm pumping my gas, it was one of those little God moments again where he's like, Gwen, I know exactly who you are too. You're not who you were saying you are. I love you. I see you. I know you. You're paid in full. Your grace, my grace covers you. Give yourself a break. I see you. Yeah. I love you. So good. Yeah. We, we quickly go to how dumb we are, yes. how stupid we are. And if we don't stay in with what God says about us, you know, I have the exact opposite story. I gassed up one time, drove home, and a cop's pulled in by Oh, me. no, you <laughs> did. <laughs> and I drove off and forgot to pay. Oh, no. <laughs> they got the number on my car, squad car pulls in behind me, and he goes, Mr. Fontaine. I said, yes, did you forget anything today? And I went, I'm going, I'm, I'm not going to know oh, of, no. and I forgot to pay. So they were very gracious. <laughs> Did you beat yourself up about that one, Leon? <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know. I think guys do that, but I've noticed that women are worse. They are. It's like if men could understand that the reason that we are to just show love, say love, pour love, yes. is because if we don't, the enemy's just so good at the opposite. That's true. And that's why I think when you talk about marriage, it's like, 
Bible says men love your wives yeah. and wives respect, respect your husbands because men are so up on respect. Right. And women just need to be reminded yeah. all the time. Because, and I think both of us do because even when it comes to loving with respect and how much you value your husband, the enemy is an accuser of the mm -hmm. brethren. Oh, and, yes. if he be, and if you do not get into God's word every day and he keeps attacking, he keeps attacking who you are, yes. who you are, who you are, who you are, which is what he did with Eve in the garden. You know, he told totally. her, he basically was saying, you're not exactly. complete. Exactly. Do you really believe Yeah, you that. ain't it yet. Let me help you be it. Exactly. That's what he was saying to God's her. God's holding out on yeah. you. Yeah. Well, let's take a break here. When we come back, I'd like to keep unpacking these three areas that God really showed you about helping people with. Perfect. I'll be right back with Gwen Smith, and we're talking from this book, I Want It All. We'll be right back. It's really important that when life gets dizzy, that we experience... Um, foundationally, uh, just the presence of God first. We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. Back. My guest today is Gwen Smith, and we're talking about the book, I Want It All. You know, God has designed every one of us, and He didn't make us, you know, to be like the animals. He made us to be like Him. Mm -hmm. And so there's a desire in us to live with significance, okay. to live with purpose. He didn't put beautiful things on the planet for no one to enjoy them. So even when you say, I want it all, I know you're talking about the whole spiritual side of His love, His presence, Yes. knowing him. But it's amazing how that when you begin to recognize the value of knowing God mm -hmm. and his presence and where our position is, we're positioned with him, that your whole life begins to change. Your marriage, how you enjoy every day, the birds singing, nature. It's amazing how when you get the internal yes. correct, how the external, it doesn't matter how many, because the world's got real issues. Yes. But Jesus said, I've overcome them all. He did. And he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I'm one of these guys, I actually don't like the people who just go on and on and on and on about how hard it is, how hard it is, how hard it is. Thank you. You ought to try the real world without Christ. Right. If you think this is hard. You know what I mean? Because totally. the comparison says, even with all of our problems, we've got Jesus. Exactly. That's the thing, is, is becoming, uh, placing your faith in Christ doesn't solve your life. It yeah. solves your salvation. <laughs> then you have the real struggles that everyone else has. And life is crazy. I, I liken it to um, uh, even, even those of us in Christ, we have busy schedules. We have things pulling at us. I mean, I'm a mom. My glory. Just, just with the schedules of my kids who are all athletes, just keeping up oh, and yeah. trying to manage. We're talking foundational. We Mom's need taxi. The, yeah. <laughs> Yes, oh honey, true, true. Um, but just managing it all, I, I feel like I'm on a hamster wheel 
and I just want to say stop and, and help, let me get off. And and um, and so just finding that time to rest in yeah. His presence and um, experiencing the fullness, um, it's just it's a challenge. It's a hard it's it's a hard <laughs> it's a hard thing every day. Yeah. I was on I was snowboarding with my son one time on. We live in Calgary, so out in one of the mountains. And I was out there in the middle of the day. So we took a Tuesday off and we just went during the day. Fun. And uh, yeah, so he's having a <laughs> blast. and I'm enjoying my time with him. And all of a sudden I'm standing, you know, halfway down this mountain. And all of a sudden all this guilt starts pushing at me. And I start thinking, what am I doing here? I got a desk full of problems. I got all these emails. I got all these staff and all these issues. I got a list so long and I'm out here snowboarding with my, oh, what is wrong? And I'm beating myself up. Mm. And it was like God, well, like that God just spoke to me in this really clear way and says, I'm just loving watching you enjoy skiing with your son. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of the go, 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 yes. go, go, go of everyday life. That when you find this coffee in a book, a friend laughing and talking yeah. about him, enjoying your daughter's soccer game, or whatever's going on, that God is loving us mm. when we're enjoying him, even when we're disengaged from work. Right. Do you find that same problem, the I, guilt of just relaxing? Totally. I do. And especially those of us who are in ministry, as if any Christian isn't, because right. we Everybody all are. Is. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, there's a constant struggle. But I, I am fully aware of the fact that my first ministry is always going to be to my husband and kids. Yeah. Always, always. Um, the other day I was on time crunch. Totally. I've got things due and a million voices saying, I need this, I need that. And, um, and I, my kids were off of school and I just, my boys had gone to, to shoot some golf balls because in North Carolina, it's sunny already. Um, and <laughs> my, yeah, my daughter was just hanging out and, and doing nothing while I worked. And I just said to her, all right, when you finish that geometry assignment and I um, finish this, then we're going to go get Froyo. So frozen <laughs> yogurt for those who don't know the Froyo term. Um, but we did. And we just, we, I was like, we're such rebels. We're going. And we just had a little fun girl time. But what we did is we w put margin. It was about establishing the priority of my love for her is I've got these assignments, but no one's more important than you. And we had a blast. And then we went home and got more work done. It's true. It's so huge. You know, as a pastor, I'm with a lot of people over the years who've passed away, like you're by their yeah. bedside. I've never had uh, a woman tell me, you know, I just, when I look back, I wish I'd have cleaned my house better. Yeah, right. I've never had them say, I wish I'd have, you know, gone to the office more. Exactly. No one has regrets like that. They always just wish they'd have played more, laughed more, loved more, relationships yes. more. No one thinks about doing cleaning more, etc. Right, and savored the presence of God more. Exactly. And um, my family said goodbye to my daddy just um, just a few months ago. Wow. And yeah, and as he um, took his last breaths, um, one of my sisters and I actually were sitting on both sides of him, and we had a hymnal, and mm -hmm. we were um, just just singing over him, and singing him into the presence of God. And there was nowhere on the planet that we should have been except for with him. And Beautiful. what we wanted to do was what mattered, and that mm -hmm. was worship. Yeah. And so um, it's really important that when life gets dizzy, that we experience um, foundationally uh, just the presence of God first. So true. You know, it's amazing when we think about the loved ones that we have that go to be with Jesus. That moment when their spirit leaves their mm -hmm. body and their eyes open to heaven and their ears open to the sounds of heaven and their nose opens to the smells of heaven, yeah. it must be phenomenal. I can just... Yeah, that's yeah. why that's yeah. why the song I can only oh, I can only imagine, only just, imagine it just touches everybody's heart yeah. because I just you can only imagine. Yeah, I think when we live our lives, you know, from day to day, that it's only the word that seems to keep us in not in God's will, not as in what we're doing, but in God's will as to how we're believing, yes. enjoying life. Today's got a whole ton of stuff coming at me. Yeah. Tomorrow might have nothing. Today might have a bunch of challenges. Tomorrow might have a bunch of victories. Yes. You know, today I might make a dumb mistake and, <laughs> and I hurt someone. And then tomorrow I'm applauded as the most amazing. Like life right. is going to do that. But if you've got this relationship with God yes. and his word is being fed to you regularly, it's like life just glows even with its ups and downs. Totally. And that's why when I wrote I Want It All, um, I have a Bible study component in the back. Because yeah. as much as I was just really seeking God's heart with the content and just 
in the trenches with him hashing out wh how I could be practical and, and help women um, know him more, there's nothing more valuable than the Word of God. Right. I have words, but his word yeah. has to be way, way preeminent. And so there's, I take him to the word. And so that whole, right. um, there's just this connection point with a, after each chapter, there's a Bible study guide in the back. Yep. Um, so you can, so when you read a chapter, because a lot of people read chapters and forget what they're going through. Yeah. You just read, 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 almost in, anesthetized as you read it. This way you can go after each chapter or you can do small groups, etc. And then just make sure that you're getting the themes, you're getting the, the focus of it. Well, and that's the thing, is, is we want to get below the surface. Yeah. Um, and this, this is a purpose to be a deep journey. At the end of every chapter, there's actually questions for reflection um, and response for your own, to just unearth your heart a little bit, and then you go back to the Bible study. So we're not, well, I'm all about going deep. I'm not like, yeah. you know, hey, listen to my story. I'm really, <laughs> it's not about sprinkling a little Jesus on them. It's about, let's go deep. And, and yep how can this really be practical for you? And in fact, the middle section, the I want it all, the, the power section, I want all the power of God's life. One of the things I talk about is the power of rest hmm. um, because we talked about margin and priorities and, um, and actually taking a breath in his presence. But I, I just came up with an acronym of rest just to be real practical. Because yeah. sometimes we just think to ourselves, I need a break. Yep. Blah. Yep. And so my thought is, okay, so when I need a break, I need rest. And here's the acronym. It's real easy. R-E-S-T. I need to reflect, engage, uh, surrender, and trust. R-E-S-T. Mm. So, and then I just break it down. So I'm trying to be real practical so that when we feel ourselves, we're in a tizzy, we're on the hamster wheel. What's, what's um, a practical tool? that can help me get to the place where I'm aligned with God's will and his power. It's going to be to rest, to, to reflect on him, who he is, what his word says, to engage, to receive and accept that invitation that Jesus says when he says, come to me when you're all you are, are burdened and, and heavy laden and, and I will you give you. He doesn't say I might. No, <laughs> it's, it's a promise. There's a promise right yeah. there. I will give you rest when you come to me. So it's engaging with Jesus, so good. surrendering my will for his. Ooh, and I could be stubborn on that, yep. but it's in the laying down that then my hands are free to pick up and what he has for me. And then it's trusting that he will provide mm -hmm. the strength that I need, the peace that I need, the joy. That's finding the rest. Very good. You know, when you talk about going deep, some people think that, you know, having a lot of wisdom is when it, it's, just, mm. it's complex, it's so deep. But I find that True wisdom is taking the complex and making it simple. Because mm. anybody can take the simple and make it complex. <laughs> and a lot of people start talking about that's, that's not very deep. And I'm going, listen to Jesus' yes. teaching. He didn't go back to the Feast of the Tabernacle yeah. and go through all of the Hebrew. He talked about goats yes. and wheat. He talked about pearls. Yeah. He talked about kids and dads who are upset with them. And so really, a lot of times, I think the things that we think are deep I don't think God, God must laugh at them. He knows yeah. atoms and nanoparticles. I mean, he knows everything. <laughs> right. And he's going back to relationships between us and God yeah. and relationships between people. And uh, so <clears throat> that's why I think it's important that our books are practical. Yes. So thank you for being with us today. This has been great. It's been a joy. Thank you. My guest today has been Gwen Smith. And this book, I Want It All. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. What a touching interview today. What I love from today's topic is the importance of letting Holy Spirit work inside you. You know, God is a heart God. He built us and He knows what we need. Part of a spirit contemporary life is recognizing that we need to be spiritually strong. How do we do that? Well, we were talking a little bit today about what do you believe? 
You know, a lot of us, we grow up with certain beliefs that we get from failures. We get from people who speak into our lives who mean well. But we get all of these beliefs deep on the inside of us that tell us kind of who we are and what we can do, and they totally limit us. What Holy Spirit wants to do is He wants to show us that we're made in the likeness and the image of God, and that we can do anything that the Word of God says we can do. One of the verses of the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The other part about being spirit contemporary is besides being spiritually alive and powerful, we need to be relevant and authentic and contemporary, able to connect with the people that God has called us to reach. That's why it's so urgent for us to get this the gospel out there. But you know, a lot of people think that they're they're preaching the gospel, and they can be condescending, judgmental, they can come down on people, and they wonder why the world begins to back away from them. The Bible says that it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. And to be spirit contemporary is to be spiritually alive, yet at the same time to be contemporary, relevant, and begin to share with people how amazing, how great God is, how much He loves them. I'd love to have you you. Work with us today. You know, for a gift of $30 or more, you're going to take this message, this beautiful message of Jesus, but in a spirit contemporary way to the world. And the world is so open. We live in a day and an age right now where people are hungry. Everyone thinks they're closed to the gospel. Millions are coming to know the Lord all around this planet in so many different languages. Your gift today is going to put people's names in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you know, if you'd partner with us for $30 or more, I'd love to send you as a thank you this CD series, Unleashing the Miraculous. Go to your phone, be a part of something amazing around this planet. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Miracle Channel is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth, which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. On Monday, Dr. Doug Weiss joins Leon to share what it means to have a servant marriage. If you marry a woman and you think you're smarter than she is, you're dumb to start with. Totally. Okay, because my wife has a complimentary gift set of wisdom and uh, abilities and eyes and ears that I don't see or hear. 